There's 10 forms of chronic urticaria. Most of them are chronic inducible urticaria, cold urticaria, cholinergic urticaria. And uh, the big one is chronic spontaneous urticaria. Um, we, we've learned a lot about CSU, chronic spontaneous, but we still need to learn a lot more about the SINDUS, the chronic inducible forms. And what we know about CSU is that it's not an allergy. We know that. Um, in some patients, it's a true autoimmune condition where we know the autoantibodies that the immune system makes that go to the mast cells in the skin, activate these mast cells to release histamine, and that is what causes uh, the wheels and the angioedema and the itch. Now, other patients, and actually there are a lot more patients than the autoimmune chronic spontaneous urticaria patients, they get CSU because of autoallergy. So what that means is they are literally allergic to themselves. So it is kind of an allergy in the sense that um, we make IgE antibodies, just like when we have hay fever uh, and are allergic. Um, but these IgE antibodies are not directed to pollen or house dust mite or peanut or other allergens. They are directed to our own proteins, our own body. And so we carry this whole machine that is uh, um, uh, the mast cell activating machine with us, the autoantibodies, IgE, and the autoallergens. And when they come together, then mast cells must degranulate. And that's what we see in most patients with chronic spontaneous urticaria. Oh, so that's interesting. So it's so there's autoimmune and immune aspects. It's not necessarily one or the other or both together. It's either or. Either or and. No, it's, it's okay. a, you know, this was the simple version. Most yeah. patients have this autoallergic type. Some okay. patients have the autoimmune type, mm -hmm. but there are also some patients who have both and very few patients who have none of those. When we look in the blood, when we look in the skin, um, but most patients, we find these signals that explain why patients get this. Now, that is not to say that stress and food and infections and drugs like ibuprofen or aspirin have nothing to do with chronic urticaria. No, 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 no. Okay. But we make the difference between um, signals that degranulate mast cells, because that's what happens when we get wheels and angioedema, and signals that act on mast cells to change them, to make them, well, twitchy, we say sometimes, to make them more ready to respond to a degranulating signal. And this is what stress does. You know? Stress comes with signals in the skin that we can measure. Substance P is one of those signals. They act on mast cells, not necessarily to degranulate, but to make the mast cells more ready to respond. And this translates to, it's easier for patients to develop wheels when they're stressed, it's easier for patients. Well, easier, I shouldn't say easier. It happens more right. likely uh, when certain drugs uh, are used, like ibuprofen, like mm -hmm. aspirin, foods, all these things. They modulate the disease. They're not the cause, but they have impact and effects in this disease. 